Our next speaker is Mr. Tom Hogan Dewey, producer ambassador for Dairy Farmers of Canada. Tom Hogan operates Val Farms with his wife and brother in British Columbia, where they have 250 registered Wolstein's and farm 300 acres. Tom has been a board member of mainland milk producers, British Columbia milk producers, and dairy farmers of Canada. Speaking on the Proaction Initiative, Tom will now discuss the milk quality, food safety, animal care, biosecurity, traceability, and environmental programs it represents. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tom Logan Dewey.
So, if I got involved in uh, this kind of thing, I also got involved in the, the dairy farm industry, you know, the dairy, the BC milk producers, and it's now called BC milk, and the uh, milk marketing board. And so we started doing little projects on our farm, got involved in Twitter, taking pictures of uh, cows out in the field with uh, nice little stuff, you know, a little uh, sign here with uh, 100% Canadian milk. And tweeting about it. We've had uh, media days at the farm where the uh, media comes in and films it and uh, we give a little chats for families out there. As well, uh, we've had a focus company, our music based on milk, go to the website, we had a thing on global television how they can make their, manufacture their own music that's sort of, I don't know, techno rap or whatever kind of crap it is, but you know, like people who do music, they make songs up and they would put it on the website and uh, top five songs would play at our farm. One song each morning for five mornings. And whoever won that contest would win an all expensive trip paid for four to the uh, Grammys in Los Angeles. The cows were the judge. Whichever cows were up the most, the milk actually were the test. That day's milking results were who won the award. It was a very, very successful campaign. Um, I'll be very honest with you, uh, the cows were up and down, but that was also the day and the week that we had a slight problem in the barn one morning, so one person was disadvantaged, <laughs> and that was a bit of an issue. Of course, that never went out. But, uh, and also, I think we talked about proactive environmental sustainability and stuff like that. Our farm, we, we had to, we were forced to become a little more environmentally sustainable because in, in our little area of the country, land is very, very expensive. We compete against the nurseries, we compete against blueberries, uh, we compete against other dairy farmers, we compete against people that come out of Vancouver and want to buy 20 acres for a house right in the middle and have a few horses around it. There's more horses in the Fraser Valley now than there was in the 40s where they actually use horses or something. Anyway, so this is a talk about proactive today. Everything we've done on our farm for sustainability has also made us money. First of all, BC government mandate that dairy farmers have to have four months of year storage. We get government grants, we get a little bit of money for it, but we put a big pin in, and sure enough, we use the manure at the proper time to spread. And uh, you cut a fertilizer bill down. Then as we don't work out, we had to put a roof on the pit because we have six feet of rain here. Why spread six feet of water? Put a roof on it. The manure became more valuable because less nutrients were lost into the air. Our pit wasn't big enough again. <laughs> we just had more cows, so we put a manure separation system in and spread only liquids now. The solids, when we want to use it, we will use it. Otherwise, we, we chop them all off and get paid for it here. We sell it to the greenhouse company, which is a massive greenhouse company that grows uh, among other things, cedar head beans for all over North America. The trucks come in and all around our area, the semis come every spring, and there's hundreds and hundreds of semis going out to all parts of North America with cedar head That's our competition for our land. This guy right here buys all the land in our area. It's not the uh, vegetable growers, but he's one of the major buyers. So we struck up a deal with him to buy our uh, solids, and it's working. So, as consumers further and further away removed from our farms, they also, they, they don't always hear what we say when we, when we talk to them. This is a little example. The main robot man was being interviewed by, uh, by a uh, reporter, and on the phone he said, cows are milked by a robot, and a brush even brushes their teeth. Well, the story was that a machine even brushes their teeth. So, I mean, you know, teeth, teeth, yeah, you know, it's quite easy to mess that up, right? But consumers are so far removed, they don't, I got a Japanese student exchange and they came over and they said, oh, we're going to milk our cows. So she came to the milking parlor and she was like, she's more fainted when she seen that the actual milk came out of the cows into the machines. Like, amazing. The milk came from, from uh, containers, right? So we've done a lot of work with the media at our farm and one of these, this is a, a food logger. She uh, wanted to come to the farm and be sure that the food was safe and secure. The BC Milk, BC Milk, our advocacy association in British Columbia, works with her under the Buy Locally Natural campaign. It's a pan-agriculture thing where there's a website where consumers 
uh, processors, farmers, garden marketers can all get together and discover who can has local natural food and art in their areas. So she was the spokesperson for it, came to our farm. Now I'm going to tell you a little story. She, she came in a, a convertible uh, uh, BMW and a uh, little frilly white top on. Hi, attention, please. There's a Chevy pickup truck, Silverado, license plate F. V five one nine four. You are in a fire lane. You need to move your truck immediately. F V five one nine four. Chevy pickup truck. Silverado. Park in the fire lane. Needs to be moved. Um, immediately. Anyway, she came to the fire and uh, I'm, I'm with the uh, the actual. Uh, Oh, we call the agency staff that was supporting this, and I said, what is she doing? I hope that's her first and last stop of the day, because she can be so covered in uh, New York, so I used to work a lot with the cows. And uh, she heard me say that a little loud, and <laughs> she said, yeah, forget it, I'll be fine. Okay, so we're, we're going through the farm, and uh, she says to me, Tom, let's walk to the cows, I'm thinking. Okay, I said, I will not let you walk to the cows in that little curly white cup. There's one big bite that thing's gone. And I uh, said, so I'll give a spare pass because they're going to get dirty. If you don't believe me. So anyway, we're, we're walking on a cheap one because we, it's just not enough for us to anyone to say, look, we care for our cows, we love our cows, we are environmentally sustainable. We have to show it. We have to show people. That's why we're going to walk to the harness to ensure the cows are happy and healthy and that sort of thing. So this is the end result. This is what we really want a consumer to think of when they drink our milk. You know, a cow loving, loving people, people loving cows. When she drinks a glass of milk, she feel good knowing that the cow is friendly enough to come up to her and that everything is good on the farm. She's got an amazing job for our dairy industry in BC, being a local town division and tweeting and blogging and all this sort of thing. So that's why it's come a time for proaction. When I joined Dairy Farmers of Canada's program two years ago, it was called 2020. Then we came up the name Proaction. And I was, we had to convince the board that this was a time to, to get involved and have a quality insurance program for, for, for dairy farmers, for dairy farmers. And we moved along with it and finally in, uh, in uh, last summer at the annual dinner meeting in Toronto, we came up with um, 13 key principles for guiding uh, proactive forward so all the problems will be on side. We'll all be doing it together as one program, not like the old CQM program, which is still isn't quite complete. And our vision statement is, I'm going to read this, I can't remember all this stuff. Our vision, through proactive, Canadian dairy farmers collectively demonstrate responsible stewardship of their animals in the environment. Sustainable, producing, high quality, safe, and efficient food for consumers. Why proactive? Yes, you know. Proactive is a commitment to Canadians that we as dairy farmers will produce the safest, so highest quality food from animals that are cared for properly from land that is going to be environmentally sustainable for land that's going to be around for the next 20, 30, and 100 years. They seem to think that our farms are factories, that we mine the soil, that we pull the grain, that we do all this stuff. This is going to be our guarantee to them and our proof that we don't have to do this stuff. Well, this is going to be our guarantee to them and our proof that we that we are just stewards of everything we do. Leadership. We want to set our own agenda. We don't want to be behind the curve when it comes to the consumer telling us or a, a retailer or a processor telling us what we have to do to sell our milk in their store or in their dairy plant. If we set the agenda and have a program that's going to be ahead of the curve and meet all the needs of everybody, if you have know, one program, one, one set of validation that can do the whole farm for everybody, Transparency. It has to be transparent. We can't just say we do. We have to approve the steps, the paperwork, and all that sort of stuff. But we've done it the best as we said we would. And the whole thing is to surround the 100% Canadian milk, the our brand, our Canadian milk brand. What's in it for me? Well, hopefully. It's going to make our lives easier. I know I hear a lot of complaints out there. It's more paperwork, it's this, it's that. But what it will do is force us to have generally accepted business practices like set SOPs, standard operating procedures that will make life easier, manage the farm. We can check things up easier with our employees. Leadership and trust. We're going to provide leadership in this so people can trust that what we do are doing is Canadian dairy farmers is what they want us to do. 
And all the six uh, modules are here, uh, CQM, animal care, quality, traceability, that sort of thing. Better farms, better image, independent validation, equals proof of trust. Here we have a note bank going down the road. That's our milk quality. Food safety. Everybody, food is the most, like when they talk about safe food, they, they tend to default that food's not safe. Oh, your antibiotics are no, hormones are no. That's all I see in my Facebook feed or my Twitter feed if I, if I, let, if I let it get to me. And I even have to befriend people because they're so anti-dairy. My own friends that they think even I can't forget that dairy dairy's good. So it has to be, well, I think the question about my student. Benefits for the market. It has to be transparent. We have to assure, and we have to, it's all part of the branding of the Canadian dairy. But we're not alone. Everybody else is going to some sort of branding. Fair trade, hearing dairy, forbidden dairies, real food movement, McDonald's has a website. Every, every food company has a website for how much they're for sustainability. McDonald's has something here where you can ask questions. Yesterday at Dairy Farmers of Canada annual policy conference, we had Bruce Solomon from the uh, Canadian Aquaculture Association. They started behind the eight ball. Let me tell you, they didn't. That fish farming was the worst thing in the world. Nobody wanted fish farming anywhere near the BC coast, Norway, or wherever it was. BC was just unbelievably against fish farming. They managed to turn the thing around the quality assurance program. In British Columbia, fish farming is now the second largest commodity for agriculture in British Columbia after dairy sales. It won't be long before they overtake us. So when you talk to government, especially in BC, they, they'll say, well, what the fish farming? They have a quality assurance program. They're gaining on you. It's free enterprise, not supply management. We have to, they look at them as the hero now, right? So we have to keep our place in the line as far as support for the government. Walmart has the green room. They want every one of their suppliers to have a quality assurance program that is, they can trust that it's, it's, it's what they want as a, as, a, as a corporate entity. We have Sobeys with their supply chain. They're a retailer. They want to make sure that their consumers will not be scared or have a health scare issue. Better food, better news. There's all sorts of different low-lane and stuff like that. Loblaws. They, they have new sections of natural food in their stores. They, 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 they're going to want the same thing as Sobeys and uh, Walmart. It's just the start. Okay. See here's the Canadian agriculture. These people, I'll tell you, in tw 20 years ago in, uh, in, in a restaurant in D.C., nobody would eat farm salmon. They would have to put natural salmon. And now we're all eating, they don't even put on the menu anymore, it's not just all farm salmon. We eat it without complaining because of the job they've done as far as uh, their, uh, their marketing and their uh, actually not having any problems. Every company, not only, not only food companies, have some sort of sustainability or quality assurance. Uh, you know, you would think, why would a company like Philips? Everybody wants to be sustainable, whether it's low uh, uses of electricity or whatever. We're just part of that, the, of that, of that system. How? We're going to be using the CQM platform. I know the CQM has got a bit of a bad name because it kind of did get rolled out of our time and uh, not all across the uh, country the same way. But it is a pretty good program. It's, it's not intrusive. It's fairly easy to work with. And uh, I know Ontario, I think you're about 60% registered here. By 2015, you're going to be 100%. We're going to use technology to simplify farmers' workload. Hopefully, computer software and stuff like that. We're going to involve all stakeholders. We're not just going to only involve farmers. We're going to involve processors, government, consumers, all kinds of groups to see what they want and how they want us to do it. And hopefully, streamlining of costs. That's very, very important. That everything was under one platform. One validator, one software system, or record keeping system, so everything only just one. Proposed timelines. Last year at the uh, annual general meeting in Toronto, we came up with a, we, this was passed, a 10 year timeline for uh, enacting the full and implementing the full pro action. No quality is already there. CQM is well on its way. Traceability is uh Good afternoon everybody. The Canadian
Global Dairy Summit starting now in Hall 1. Global Dairy Summit is now starting in Hall 1, the dairy classroom. So, all the, this, all the different timelines, and we understand that the most difficult one will be, uh, most, the most difficult one will be uh, the final security environment, especially environment because of all the different uh, provincial regulations. I mean, in British Columbia, we have seven feet of rain, my is six feet of rain, and an hour and a half across the mountain, they've got to get different, different things, or they have to come up with a way to work under a umbrella where every, every certain region can have their own uh, sort of environmental. Uh, your comfort zone as far as the environmental part. So, consumers ask, farmers answer. So, I'll go to Milk and a fantastic website where consumers can go in and ask questions and farmers answer. So, there will be uh, even some of the questions that you'll give to some of the farmers that are tasked to do this and you'll ask them. So it's, a great, it's a great way to get a hold uh, of the consumer interest. Coming up next, the next thing that's going to uh, be your big hot button item will be out of the module There's going to be standard operating procedures for practices such as pain control and dehorning. Ask the call, ask the animal outcomes. Environmental measures like good bedding. Action plan for farmers who have uh, uh, problems with some of the other emotions for your uh, lameness and stuff like that. Just give you a little story about how important things like uh, uh, pain, you know, uh, pain control for dehorning. I, I, I wasn't going to go to the pain control because my brother and I would make a stench and stick the heifer's head in there and be hard. It was all good. We were strong. We were young. So. But as I got older, the employees took over. And the first thing you do is talk to the vet because they're tired of getting beat up by heifers when they're being dehorned at even, you know, five weeks of age. So they started using the uh, pain pillars and, uh, and stuff like that. And one day I'm giving a tour on, uh, to the farm and uh, he was a brain surgeon and his wife was a internist. Uh, stomach problems and stuff like that, and I didn't. I don't want any bad to happen on the farm. And here's a tour. Believe me, I I tell the kids. I I, I call them kids because they're all young kids. But okay, it's the kids. Nothing ever happens when you see a fancy car somebody on the farm. Stop whatever you're doing. Just do regular work. Don't be horning, chasing cows around, that sort of thing. Right? Doing just that and that the line. Uh, I come around and I smell some smoke. Yeah. The kids are dehorning. <laughs> and I come and I was right there. I couldn't hide it, right? So I came around the corner. There's 10 hutches, 10 calves laying on the side having a nice little sleep. And I said, oh, boy, oh, we're going to be horning the calves today. And the, and the doctor says, uh, the, uh, the, the ranger says, well, what are you doing, Tom? I said, well, we, we, we give him some painkiller and I give him a little sleep, you know, and stuff like that. And he went, wow, that's great. What product are you using? Oh, I don't know. I said, here, here's the stuff, right? So that's the kind of thing that gets the consumer. You know, something like this, something like deep one. The animal that the scrubbing brushes, you know, for, um, you know, we, we, we see in our barns with brushes that are not allowed to scrub the cattle. That's one of the biggest point of interest when, when visitors, non-farmers come to my farm, is the animal brushes. We put it in. Why do we put it in? We put it in because it makes us feel good that our cows are happy. It takes, takes the hair off and stuff like that. But believe it or not, that's something that we can promote and grow after is animal care. We're doing these things all day long for our own farms, and we just have to put it under a banner called Proaction and, and sell it. Anyways, thank you for your input. Uh, Dairy Farmers of Canada uh, is always listening. Uh, we sent out a survey, I believe it was January, December, and they got late getting out, and there was a deadline at the end of the year. We're still accepting surveys. So far, only 400 have come out. I've heard a lot of complaints in my travels about Proaction, and how Dairy Farmers of Canada is going to travel people and distribution and all the different costs and all sorts of things. Hey guys, there's 12,000 farmers out there. There's 400 free plots. We want, we want your input. We're willing to listen, we're willing to work with the farmers to make it a good program that's easy for everyone to attend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. That was wonderful. Appreciate the information. Yep.